Welcome to this series, Audacious Us. It's a hard cry to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in Douala, in Cameroon and beyond, using telecommunications and the media that are available. Actually, we have with us here Reverend Chambly. Welcome, Reverend Chambly. Thank you. Bro. Reverend Chambly has pastored about three churches, if I'm right, and uh, this is his biggest church is pastoring, Trinity Baptist Church. Reverend Chambly, to start with, have you ever seen any crisis affect the church of the magnitude the church is being affected today? Thank you very much, Roland. Um, the talk of crisis of this magnitude, I don't think that for my 20 years in ministry, pulpit ministry, I have seen such a crisis. Actually, there have been crises from within. The church has mostly faced crises from within. For the period that I've been in ministry, I have seen lots of crises from within the church. But the talk of a crisis of this magnitude in which most of it comes from outside. I have not seen this. And so it is like taking us unaware as if we were not prepared for it. Most churches, are, uh, they, they, they have some stability and they have looked for ways that they can handle crisis from within. But to handle crisis from without, like what we have right now, is a new challenge for us. And we have to look for new ways on how to handle such crisis. The statistics speak for themselves. Yeah. I just got the statistics. Worldwide, we have more than 4 million people contaminated. Yes. More than 286 deaths right now. And in Cameroon, we have more than 100 deaths. Yeah. This is since January 2019, 2018. And Pastor, when we come to talk about the gospel and such moments like this. What comes to my mind is, 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 is uh, what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 16. Who to me if I don't preach the gospel? And uh, who, not who to me if I, I die of COVID, but if I don't preach the gospel, it's who to me. It's Paul talking to himself. When I look at uh, Moses, I just want to help you see a panoramic view, pan panoramic view of what I was I was looking at when I looked at the scripture. Moses left his uh, comfort there with his father-in-law and yes. to go back to Egypt, though he knew he could die. Yeah. Esther took the risk to face the king and said to his people, pray for me, I'll face the king and if I die, I die. How can we contextualize that kind of mindset today, Pastor, about risk-taking in order to do what God is asking us to do? Uh, I believe that the need to be a rebirth of true Christianity in the lives of our people. Uh, if you look at what is happening in the world today, Christianity is like a window dressing, a name that someone takes, without counting the cost. Time and again, when Jesus Christ, when someone followed Jesus Christ, Jesus would make sure that the person counted the cost. The person was very sure that he knew what he was doing. Jesus was not interested in, in crowds of people following him. He was much more interested in the quality of people who followed him. And you look at the life of the Apostle Paul, he's talking about a life of quality. A life of commitment. Someone who had who encountered Jesus Christ and had a turnaround completely and dedicated his life. The same passion he had in persecuting Christians was the same passion he had in preaching the gospel. To an extent that he said, Whoa, am I? If I do not preach the gospel, he was like calling a curse over him. So you will know his commitment. And so we need a rebirth of that type of Christianity even now that even during this period of the COVID-19 we shouldn't get ourselves hiding somewhere but that we come up even though respecting those measures but letting the people know that the gospel must be preached that what we need now is the gospel and not any other thing we need the gospel most right now in our country the rebirth of the first century Christianity Pastor we can't go with half here today because we were going to to face so many questions, trying yeah. to answer so many questions. Mm -hmm. 
some people think, I mean, people in church, they believe that sending a Christian to do evangelism during these times, no matter how responsible they can be, covering their face and just sharing trust, it's as if you're sending them to, to a suicide mission. And what would you say if a Christian contracted COVID-19? Because they went out to evangelize on your call. The gospel is suicide mission. Christ makes that clear that it is suicide mission. If you want to keep your life, you lose it. That's what Christ said. But if you lose your life, for my sake, you gain it. And so from there, you understand that the gospel is suicide mission. Each time he calls us, he's saying, come and die. And if you are not ready to die, you can't follow me. Time and again, we'll hear him talk about taking up your cross daily and following me. And so if a Christian were to die because of an infection of COVID-19, why preaching the gospel that Christian is blessed? Death will just be a transition into a more beautiful state that is going to be with the Lord. Could it not encourage carelessness? It will not. It will not encourage carelessness. Christ says, I will be with you. And the fact that he says, I will be with you, doesn't mean that we have to be careless with our lives. Actually, the measures that the government has given us, we are implementing, we are actually talking here, this is the distance we have kept, and we have our masks on. We are not being careless. But I'm sure that people are getting up. So the issue is not a mask that you put on. It's just being obedient. And using the technology that you have at this time, in reaching out in obedience to the Great Commission. And he who says that go up, the same person has said, I will be with you. So he has not given us time that during COVID-19, you can stay at home. When he asked Timothy, when Paul asked Timothy to preach the gospel, he said, preach it in season and out of season. Pastor, I want us to elaborate on one thing Paul said. Yeah. It's in Acts 20, 24. You remember that passage? Mm -hmm. I do not count, I do not account mm -hmm. my life of any value, yeah. nor as precious to myself, mm -hmm. if only I may finish the course. Yeah. Does that concretize this kind of risk-taking mindset you, you're talking about? Yes, uh, that is risk taking with vigilance. The value he, he yeah. attaches to his life, yeah. uh, Father Paul, to the value he attaches to the, the gospel. To the gospel. The gospel is greater than his yeah. life in this world. Yes. Placing the gospel side by side with the life of the Apostle Paul, he sees the, the gospel more than his own life. For him, the gospel should live on while he dies. So even when the Holy Spirit is ministering to him that in every city, imprisonment and hardship awaits you, you say, but I count my life worth not. That is still in that text, Acts 20, whereby Paul ministers to the elders of Miletus in Ephesus there. And so he places the gospel side by side with his own life and the gospel takes a, a greater value. And so instead of struggling to preserve his life, he will want to take the gospel. But I'm saying here that uh, this is risk that he takes with vigilance because if you look at his life again and ministry in Thessalonica you discover that when persecution came Paul didn't stay there and say let me die here Paul knew his purpose and he has heard from God very well and knew where God was leading him so there was a time in Paul's life that Paul had to to give way mm -hmm. yes even though that was not like he would never come back there but it was a strategy so in times like this, we have strategies based on the realities on the ground. But we shouldn't stop preaching the gospel. And in church history, we, we, we know that such, such moments are, uh, have existed. I would like to, to maybe point out one church father, which we all know, is, is Martin Luther, who had to help the church rediscover the gospel. Yeah at the risk of his own life because at that time the gospel of grace in fact the gospel of justification by faith alone was being corrupted by the gospel of works and the church was so vehement on their position that for him to have triumphed he had to put his life at risk 
And he said something which I, which, which I want to quote. He says this, If I profess with the loudest voice and clearest exposition every portion of the truth of God, except precisely that little point which the world and the devil are at the moment attacking, I am not confessing Christ, however boldly I may be professing Christ. Where the battle rages, there the loyalty of the soldier is proved. Yeah. I think that is a powerful statement that Martin Luther made. We live at a time in which we have decided to color. Uh, uh, there, there is a lot of falsehood that is going on. Then we have pampered it in the church. But Martin Luther is saying that that is where the loyalty of the soldier, of the child of God, should be seen. And we're trying to escape yeah. to, to slide off the, yeah. the real issues of the day, of the time. Yes, we, we, we try to dodge it. Mm -hmm. We don't want to confront it. But not with Martin Luther. And that is why he is one of the uh, founders of uh, the, the Reformation movement. Because he stood for the truth and wrote the 95 points against the Roman Catholic Church. Actually, his intention of doing that was that let's sit down and discuss this thing. He wanted some truth. He was not even out to tear the church. It is because the church kicked him out and said, we don't need you here. And that's how Luther left the, the, the Roman Catholic Church. Pastor, to help us understand what's happening in the Trinity, yep. if organized the service into small groups, uh, because as you say, the gospel cannot be stopped, but we have not to be careless. Yep. I think it's a clear picture of that balance. Yes. There was a continuity plan, mm -hmm. and that continuity plan took into account the distance separating mm -hmm. and the hygiene measures that were prescribed by the church. How far has it been successful, Pastor? Well, uh, we will say here that even though we are not there to manage the daily success of this, but we know that from our, our, our Sunday uh, evaluation, uh, we can say that we are succeeding. I'm saying succeeding, I, don't, I, I can't put a success mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. because we are building as, on it as uh, this uh, COVID crisis continue, all right? And the government has relaxed some of the measures and people are almost getting relaxed but from the side of the church we are telling christians that please be careful this has to do about your life all right if you die today the economy will continue and so we want to preserve the lives of our christians and encourage them that please keep on with these hygiene measures that have been put in place and so we are making progress on a, on, on, on a daily basis and encouraging our Christians. Hand washing is a, a, a daily practice and hand sanitizing if there is no flowing water and soap for you to wash your hands with is a sanitized it. And then the social distancing in church, we make sure we keep it even in our meetings within the week. And we make sure we respect the maximum number of 50 in our garden. We struggle with some of these things, but we are not yet perfect yet. But we want to make sure that we put in our best to make sure that uh, uh, on our own side, physically, we, 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 we keep the Christian strong and healthy because we know that it is in a healthy body that you can preach the gospel and preach it well. And today, you want the Christians not only to come for gathering, yep. but to dare to tell somebody about the love of Jesus Christ in this delicate moment. I just want you to to, to explain to the Christians what are the possibilities of, 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 uh, of doing so than the possibilities of, of, of obeying the Great Commission yeah. during this COVID-19 crisis. How can they be committed? We need a lot of courage to do so. And uh, before that courage comes, we have to reorder our priorities. Ask yourself what you are living for. Is it just living for bread? Do you know your mission? Why Christ has called you to be here in Douala at this particular time? Because most of the time, our priorities are not really in the... We have wrong priorities, wrong values in our life. But when we have to reorder our values and put Jesus' values first into our lives, you will discover that we will want to dare out, reach out with courage, and let someone hear the gospel, even during this time. So the issue is an issue of our values here. 
If we have our values right, our behaviors will change. That's why the worship had to continue, because the preaching had to continue. Yes. And the, uh, there is the aspect of praying yeah. for, for ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, the church, has, I know the church has had all night, there has been a prayer movement mm -hmm. going on in spite of the crisis. Yeah. We pray through WhatsApp mm -hmm. and help meetings through uh, uh, social media, that means through uh, things like uh, Zoom. Yeah. We have meetings in church here mm -hmm. for the project, for one of the projects you in that project. Mm -hmm. So there's a possibility to continue the ministry. But now the church has developed the plan. And I hear that uh, I'm, I'm aware the plan is about 2.5 million. Mm -hmm. So is it possible to raise 2.5 million pastor in this time of crisis to do ministry? It is very possible very possible. Again, I'll go back to the issue of our value. If we discover that our real reason for living is taking this gospel out and not building the mansion that we want to be, then 2.5 million will not be anything for us. Really. So the issue is our value. When we get our values right, then the money comes. But when the values are not kept right, you can begin to hit and hit and hit. So my encouragement through this forum is that we have just one supreme value we are living for, and that is Christ and making him known to the world. That's the reason why we live. Other things might come. And this is what should take our investment, putting it up and be ready to die for it. That is our real value. Christ and him crucified and making him known. Are you number one band? Thank you, Pastor, for this time. Thank you. Reverend, I'll give you the opportunity to speak directly to the Christians for some minutes, for some minutes and challenge them during this particular time to be involved in evangelism. One of the effects Christians of this COVID-19 thing is that uh, it has brought in much more fear in our hearts than faith in God. Many of us, we have been afraid of death. We are afraid to mingle even with others because of the fear that we might get infected. And so many have stayed back at home and we want to preserve, preserve our life. But my encouragement is that let us get out of that fear first. Let us conquer the fear that is inside us with faith in God and be able to, to meet, yet respecting our social distancing and carry out the number one mission that God has given to the church, which is a great commission, even at this time. This is a new crisis that we have had and we have to come up with new strategy. The strategy we are presenting to you, we plead that you invest in this heavenly venture. You may end up having lots of mansions here on earth, but Christ will not evaluate your life on earth based on the mansions that you build here on earth. Christ will evaluate your life based on the souls that you reach out to. And so putting in just a little will go a long way for us to realize this great project. The Lord bless you and keep you as you support this kingdom venture in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for following us. Risk all things for Christ in order to gain all things that He offers you. God bless you for following us. Okay.